Hey, hosers, welcome to Canada. There's not much we drop our sticks for around here, except for this and this. Now we hook you with this one. Now you can get the 100 mil, and the 500 mil. Great stuff. Are we live? We are live. Hi folks, welcome. Lost count on how many we've been doing. Purple Heart Project, live YouTube workshop, it's a fundraiser for the Purple Heart Project. Quickly, in case you don't know what that is, six times a year, we bring in uh, six combat wounded vets each time. We treat them to a six-day, very intense, and to a workshop. Now, intense, I mean we start at 8 in the morning and we go until 11 at night. We do that for six days. We cover their airfare, their hotel, their meals, and each vet sends, gets sent home with approximately $3,200, $3,300 worth of premium tools, stuff that you'd find in my tool cabinet. Now, in addition to that, let me, let me finish this. I'll come back to it. Remind me, Brent's Brigade, but Jake. Um, so we have, uh, we have two problems. Number one is paying for it. Number two, which is the biggest problem, is finding the people that need it the most. They tend not to be out waving their arms saying, hey, look at me. They're held up at home. Sometimes I hear from wives that tell me this is the first time they've been out of their house in four years. Uh, so yeah, I really need your help in spreading the word. Just tell everybody about it. Sooner or later, somebody who knows one of these people that's suffering is going to say, gee, I wonder if they'd be interested. Um, second thing is the financial side of it. It costs money. We figure it costs, we used to think it was 3500 but it's actually more than that because we've added to the program. But uh, we raise the fun mon money through our uh, sale of our own hand tool, or pardon me, our own uh, all of our saws, any saws that you buy, 10% of that goes to the Purple Heart Project, and then we get donations from people who just feel. In fact, uh, tonight we just had a phone call from a chap in California who has uh, said, Rob, I will match the first $1,000 in donations tonight. So there's a challenge for you folks. And that's Derek. Derek. Derek from California. Yeah, I didn't mind. Well, okay, his first name. And, uh, you know, we've had people like that. I think of Charlie Ray, who's who's done things like that and uh, other, I shouldn't mention one name because I can't remember them all, but we just find the best people out there. They tend to gravitate towards this program. Uh, now, what I want to tell you about is the Bench Brigade. I'm just going to say to you briefly, um, about six weeks ago, maybe seven weeks ago, I woke up one night thinking, oh my goodness, we're sending these guys home. We get them all excited about woodworking and they get excited. We send them home with all these tools, and then they go home and they have no bench to work on. They're trying to do this on the end of a kitchen table or on a workmate, and that can be extremely frustrating. I've taught in some classrooms where the benches were horrific, and uh, it's hard enough doing it with a nice stable bench, but on something that's wiggling all over the place, it's almost impossible. So we decided that we would somehow find a way to provide each one of these vets that comes to our class, and ones that have, so there's an invitation coming out. Uh, we would provide them with a bench. And I knew there was enough people out there that would love to be able to participate in this because there are so many people that would know what these people have done for us. They don't even know us, and yet they've done it. And now they're having to pay for it the rest of their life with the, uh, from demons in their head to uh, physical wounds. Anyway, so Jack Lane... And uh, Jack quickly somehow managed to, uh, actually I think Chris identified himself. Jake, I cannot get my hand. My Shahusky. Shahusky. Have teamed up on this. Chris is handling the shipping. Jack is the, uh, is the brigade commander and he is rallying the troops. We had our first bench. Can we show that? We can't, can we? We should have thought about this earlier. If you told me I could have, yeah. We had our first Bench Brigade Bench delivered yesterday to, um, what's Chris's last name? Cozum. Chris Cozum in South Carolina? No. North, I think. North Carolina. And we got it all on video. So we're going to, we're going to put together a, um, a Facebook page, and we're going to try to videotape every one of these. We've had 88 vets to date, and, uh, and we've got 36 planned for this summer. So that's a lot of benches. But we've had over 50 people volunteer to do this, and a lot of them are in the process of building the bench right now. It's the same bench that we use out in our classroom. It's that $100 bench that we developed, the Cosman bench, made of MDF and plywood. 
We provide them with. We provide you with the plans. We send you the vice and the bench dogs. You, the uh, volunteer, buy the materials, assemble it, finish it, box it up, and you take care of the getting it to the vet. And what Jack does is goes in and tries to find people as close as possible. So, if you're watching and you are a combat wounded vet that has been to our workshop, has come as one of our scholarship work, uh, participants, whether any of the classes, we, we're on class number 14. Um, we're dealing with the guys that are going to be coming to this class going forward, but we're look, reaching back and helping all of these guys. So contact me, and I will make sure that Jack gets your name, and we will make sure you get a bench. We've got several that we've added this week. And Jack, you're doing an incredible job, and Chris, what, what a team. What a team. Couldn't ask for better people. Now, I always like to have, we've been doing this now for four or five weeks, to have one of these vets come on and tell you from their perspective what the Purple Heart Project has done for them. And tonight we are going to have... Um, Paul. Uh, yeah, but uh, Paul's title is uh, Lieutenant, Com Lieutenant Commander Paul Morrison. Morrison from Ottawa, who is uh, Navy, Canadian Navy. He's ser currently serving down in Australia, so this is <laughs> a little early for him. He's going to come on. Now, Paul... Actually, when I introduce, when, when, before Paul comes on, I'll give him a proper introduction. Hold tight. Let's show you what, to, so here's the gifts. To, so here's the way we do this. You're, uh, you're free to donate as much as you want. If you want to go to our website, Frick will put the link on there. We did this ourselves so we could avoid all of the uh, processing fees that everybody else like GoFundMe charges. And you can go on there and you can donate any amount you want. Remember, if you want to cover a soldier entirely, it's 3,500. And, uh, and the first, up the first thousand is going to be matched by our friend in California. Um, what am I looking around for? Oh, okay. So we have a draw at the end of the night, and uh, it has nothing to do with the donation, not anymore. So here's what we're giving away tonight. And we, if you haven't don't know this, we just released. Uh, if you if you've ordered from us in the last couple of months, and your order came in a box, you get a little sample of maple syrup, little forty milliliter jar. We just like to give you a little taste of Canada. And there was such a great reaction to it, we decided first that we would... First one's on us. Yeah, first one's on us. First pancake's on us. Actually, there's probably enough in there for two pancakes, unless you're a guy that likes to guzzle it, like uh, some people we know. So we lo we contacted the uh, local f place that does it. It's not that far away. They've been in business, I think Luther told me, since the 1800s. I think they're fifth generation. And this season has been a particularly good season. Some years, some springs, the sap runs better than others. The downside is all of the shops that they sell to are closed because of the coronavirus. So we're doing our part. So what we have are available are um, the 100-milliliter uh, jar. Great, Rex, you want to grab a 100-mil for me, please? I should have got you to bring one in. But tonight's, give, tonight's giveaways are going to be 500-mil. 500-mil. We're going to give away three 500-mil jars. of, uh, And this is dark stuff, too. This is rich. This is taste. This is made good. Is, wood is good. And uh, our, our new wax. So everybody will get, three people will get that. And then our grand prize is going to have a little bit of a Canadian theme to it. We're going to give you a full six-pack roll of stick tape so that you can do up all your tools. We're, we're going to give you a mallet. We're going to give you a jug. We're going to give you a fret saw with a dozen blades. We're going to give you wax. And you're going to get a pack of my absolute favorite bits in the entire world, fish twist bits. And these things cut the cleanest hole that you will ever see. And there's there's the uh, small size that you can get too. That's that's for your in-laws. All right. That's uh, is that everything? All of our stuff that we need to talk about. Is there anything am I forgetting? Any shout-outs? Angie's here with us. Angie's here. Hi, Ange. Megan. We're working on the we're working on the desk. Megan's back. Megan's back. She's quarantined. She's not allowed to leave home. They actually checked up on her the first day she was back. Ken is on, I believe. Uh, yep, Super so, Dave's here. So Ken, Megan's going to be watching for vets who have been to our class. I want to give you a shout-out. So Megan will catch that. Just put on there what class you were in, and uh, Megan will catch that and, and notify us so we can give you a shout-out. Luther's going to be on there answering questions. Super Dave's going to be on there answering questions and making sure that Luther's giving you the right answers. Uh, Ken's going to be answering questions. Rex is here. Frick is here. He's going to keep an eye on it as well. And Jake's behind the camera and yours truly. 
Oh, so the only announcement we have to make is that uh, we made we had to pull the uh, Danny Bell's on too. Danny Bell, D Bell, Stinker there with him. Then the girls. Your daughter Annika is here as well. Who? Annika's here. Oh, Annika. Yeah. Uh, well, I got a couple things more things to announce. Remind me to Annika and Loren. So we had to move our June class. Uh, they've just extended the uh, closure of the borders until the end of May, and that's just too tight for us to uh, to book all the flights for the vets. So the May class has been moved to October 5th. Uh, there's been one person that hasn't been able to do it, but his cla- his ticket sold or his spot sold up real quick. <coughs> so as far as I know, there are no open spots, but we'll let you know if there are. Um, Loren and Annika, who now work for us, uh, they're going to be doing the phone calls to people who place orders. And also Annika is going on and she's taking care of our YouTube. Um, when you comment on YouTube, and you're, we like to be able to correspond with you. So Annika is going to handle, handle that. And if it's something that dad has to kick in, then she'll uh, notify me. Go easy on her. Pardon? Sean, Sean brother, how are you? Sean's wife, Angela, is a nurse, and uh, she's battling the, uh, the, the good fight, so I tip my hat to her. I said that uh, this week on Facebook. And Sean's going to be coming to one of our uh, workshops. I can't remember which one, but we have a program now where we're going to bring back a uh, former vet to come in and help us teach each time we teach, and Sean's one of the ones that's coming back. Okay, anything else? Ebby's here as well. Ebby, brother. Uh, um, Ebby's getting a bench from, he's, he's in for a bench. Sean, I need to talk to you about a bench. Remember, if you're a combat vet that's been to our class, you, you, we've, we're, we've got a bench brigade willing to build benches for you. Okay, now we can go to work. So what we've got, what? Do you want to tell them a little more about the standing desk? Oh, yeah. Well, let's, yeah, yeah I want to share this with you. So here's where we are to date. If you're not, that we're building this in our online workshop in the, uh, that's a pitch pocket. It's common in cherry. In our online workshop, and it's been taking us forever, but you know, it's a fun process. So I, I want to show you, yeah, I'll tell you this first. So we're doing, we're working on the last piece. So this is the part that will sit up in the top and your envelopes will drop in there in your paper. And we're going to have some cool little dividers in there. But I want to show you this because it's been complicated to build because these pieces all had to be pre-finished before we build it. So I haven't jo- joined that end yet. So this centerpiece has got through wedge tenons with the holly wedges, just like we have down here, right, on that piece. And then we just put this, we just put this together last night. Or when, when did we Today. do that? Today. So this corner's done. Now, once that, uh, when we film on Monday... We'll put the rest of this together, which is going to be a little bit tough because you're putting together two sets of dovetails as well as the through wedge tenon. So you got to get that together. Then you got to get your wedges in, everything in place. So, but it looks really cool. So here's what I wanted to share with you. I uh, I really I showed this to folks last the other day. I just got to get a piece of tape. Uh, what tape did that, Jake? You can use yellow. I don't think the yellow will grab it. So when I built this, I did it in, in a little different way than I normally would. And I built the drawer fronts. I, I'm, I'm going to explain this to you because I think it's worth telling you. So I took this piece of wood. And the first thing I did is I ripped off this top strip, then I ripped off this bottom strip. So now I had the center section. I took the center section, I made a cut here, I made a cut here, 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 and here. I took this piece to be my drawer front, which means I, uh, I had to hand plane the, the, this edge and the edge of this piece in between, and I had to hand plane the end of this, and the, all of the surfaces that were cut were now planed, and then we put it all back together. So when we put it back together, that allowed me to have a drawer front that perfectly f- matched. In fact, if you stand here and look at it straight on, you have a hard time picking up where the joint line is, and it'll be the same with these two. 
So I've been holding off on, on the design of the, uh, of the oh. knob. And uh, I'm glad I did because someone just mentioned to me the other day, it's a shame to break up that surface with a knob. I don't think there's any knob that could go on there that would enhance it. It's going to take away from it. So what we're going to do, uh, because I haven't attached this yet, see this is still unattached, I can get at the bottom side of this. And I'm going to figure out a way where I can reach in here and pull that drawer out so that it pops up. It's almost going to be a hidden drawer. Well, it is a hidden drawer. If someone broke in and they lifted up your lid, they wouldn't see there was a drawer there. It would be dark, right? Tend not to break in the middle of the day. But you'll be able to go in there, and you'll be able to pull that back with your finger, open it, and then you just grab hold of it like that. Same thing down here. I didn't want to interrupt these. These two drawers are, that piece is right from there. Now, it has oxidized a little more here than here. That's why there's a slightly different color. I, can, I still have access to the underside of here. I can go in there and figure out a way where you reach underneath and give it a little pull, and then you can pull it out with your hand. Now, the whole idea behind this was, uh, as a uh, standing desk, as you're dealing with your customer, customer's going to need a pen to sign the contract or whatever. So we have a little pen, pen drawer. We have one on each side. You don't see it until we pull it open. There it is. Now, I, I, I've got to go in and do the little final fitting on that. It's a little sticky right there, but it'll be more cool when it actually is set up to, to work. Can I get this open? Or did I? Oh, no, I didn't. If you close this hard enough, actually, it'll, it'll work even better, but I just have to, I have to tell you about it. When you do that, it'll puff this drawer out. Just, it just puffs it out like that, and then you'll be able to open it the same way. However... When I cut the hole in here, in order to be able to access the drawer, that's going to lose that nice seal. If you look up in here real close, there's a hole in there at the back of where there's, there's another little drawer on the other side too, there's, and that's what causes it to puff out. So i got to figure out a way to cut a hole in there and seal that off. And the reason why it's going to be a little bit difficult is if you look, you know, your drawer, the bottom doesn't sit on the bottom. It rides on the rails, so we gotta somehow I gotta figure out a way to seal that, which ought to take us another thirty or forty episodes. How we never get the thing finished, but it's all right, we're enjoying it. Let me know what you think. Okay, now Jake. Yes. Uh, uh, all right. How far into it are we? Twenty oh, minutes. Twenty minutes. That's that's pretty good. We're usually farther than that. So I've been thinking about this, and I think I've got the solution. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So this, we we'll call it a modesty panel. really isn't, but on a desk it would be. The problem was I didn't, uh, you know, we've got cross-grain cross construction. This is moving this way. This is long grain. Uh, this is long grain. It's not moving at all. So I thought, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to keep that from, from spreading at the bottom like that? Because, because the integrity yeah, of, pardon? Pete? Pete. Pete was one of our guests. Um, Pete just built his own bench. Um, if this spreads at all, it's going to affect the fit of our drawer. We're going to have a side-hung drawer in there. But So what I was thinking of doing was we would drill a little hole right here and put a pin in, and then we would slot this, and that would allow, that would allow the, uh, that would al the slot would allow the wood to expand and contract. Everything's going to come from the top and go down. The groove is longer than the tongue. However, the problem with doing that is by the time you cut a little slot right there, you're dealing with pine. you got short grain. It's not going to be very strong. And then it dawned on me today, all we really need to do is go in and glue the first couple of inches, which won't be a problem with movement. We'll actually pin. We'll pin down about two inches. And by pinning down two inches, that's going to secure the first two inches. There's no way you're going to be able to spread that bottom part. That means you've got to bend that board from, from here on, and that, that's just not going to happen. So that's our, that's our solution. We'll pull it nice and tight here, which will keep the joint tight, but we've got, a, we've got a little groove, remember? We've got a little visible groove all the way around, and that's intentional, and we've got to do that on the top too, right? Remember, we're remember to do that. And then we'll glue it, we'll pin it, and it'll be super strong. So I think the way to proceed is... Uh, Assemble a corner. Yeah, we'll assemble a corner, then we'll put that in, fasten it up in here, and then assemble the other corner. But before we do that, we have to go in and we have to secure those runners 
that are made out of uh, Super Dave wood. Some people call it bare wood, but only because people, only because they don't know. Some people incorrectly. In New Brunswick, pine trees were often marked with a crown seal because they were important for making masts for the British Navy. So I'm sure there are vera wood trees in where, Jake? Jake, pay attention. Where are the vera wood trees coming from? Argentina. Somewhere in Argentina, there are vera wood trees with the Super Dave seal. And at the peril of your own life, you would cut down that tree. Now, some of you are wondering, what is he talking about? Can't let you in on that little secret. Okay. So, what we, we've got long cross-grain construction here, too. Remember, this is not going to move this way. This is. So, I think the best thing to do is to go in here and put one screw right in there, and we can, we can hold it fast. It's plenty strong, that Vera wood. And that'll just keep everything in place. Don't have to worry about it. Uh, we don't need to do anything with this. That's done. This is all done and ready to assemble. We don't have to do anything in terms of uh, working on that, I don't think. So uh, we, I'd like to have uh, I'd like to ask, no, I don't want to. Can't use a round-headed screw. It's gonna um, be tiresome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just looking at that, Jake, and saying we we still have to come in plane that. We don't want it, we don't we don't want this part of this. We're going to cut a groove on the sides of the drawer, but the drawer is going to ride on this part and this part. It's not going to touch. We don't want this touching the bottom of the drawer. That's more friction than what we need. So the sides of the drawer will run on here, and the uh, and the sides of the dado. Or the groove, pardon me, and the drawer will run on the two sides of the bare wood, which, by the way, is naturally oily. And that's uh, one of the reasons why it has gained this specific use that it was originally used for. Uh, what do I need on that? Wooden half inch. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, that one's already done, so let's go ahead and mark it and drill it. Uh, we'll hold back. I guess I can go right there. I didn't go all the way to the back, and that'll allow for a little bit of movement. So that's eight. We want the four-inch mark. And I'm going to use my, my uh, Yankee screwdriver. And since we're using the brass, so we want to get a, I want to get a drill bit, in case you don't know, that is approximately the root, the diameter of the root of the screw. The root of the screw is right in the base of the threads. That's what we're looking for. That one's a little bit too big. You know what? I got a whole bunch of the same size drills. I think that'll be the one that's already in there. How are we doing, Frick? No questions? Any more vets? Um, I go back and read all the comments the next day, and I can't believe how many vets were on there that didn't get recognized. So I was hammering away on the guys because of that. So persist. Paul made a good point that uh, Super Dave Wood is really tricky to work with because it moves in both its width and its length. <laughs> 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 Needs a real talent to use, he says. Who said that, Paul Morrison? Yeah. Well, he would know. As would Michelle. Also, just like... Just like Super Dave, it doesn't move very fast. <laughs> now, I'm going to drill through this. And it is stubborn wood. Yeah, I need 
need to have a bigger drill than that. I need to countersink it. Now this is a handheld countersink and I could run over and grab one and put it in the electric drill, but you should pick up one of these. Actually, Jake, you know, we should look into, I, I use this a lot. I just find it's very convenient to have it in my shop pocket. Now, let's, uh, let's switch that out. I don't want the screw making contact or grabbing in the Vera wood. I want it to pass freely through the Vera wood and grab in the pine so it'll pull it tight and hold it in place. So now what I have to do is get a, get a drill bit. I gotta take these all out, I can't see them. Yeah, what did he, he say? That's not what you were saying when we were on the hike today. <laughs> Most people don't know that Super Dave was an NHL Hall of Famer, including Super Dave. And the entire NHL. It is a very well kept secret. All right, that's enough. Now that's a, if you're not familiar with, <coughs> um, are we going to have these? Not those sandals. Why not? Why not? Why wouldn't we? None of the screws. If you're not familiar with Robertson screws, this is a zero. This is a uh, one, two, and this is a three. And these are the original, look at that, the original Robertson screwdriver that we will soon carry. I think they're on the way. Wednesday. Wednesday? I'm excited about that. They fit amazingly well. They should. They're the ones that invented the screw. Now should I want you have pre Oh, is that pine? That's why you didn't cut pre-cut it? I did. Would you pre-cut it? Oh, oh, no, no. I got a question. What, Rick? You're not supposed to ask questions. Not me. Oh. So this comes from Blue Knight. That's his username. Why did you put the tails on the side instead of the cross piece? Is there a rule on where they go and why? Good question. Let me make up an answer. Um, I didn't want, if you, if you think about it, if you had made, it's bad enough that the tails have some really short grain on them. But if it was the pins, your pins, your pins would be standing this way, but they would be so much short grain, they just wouldn't have much strength. It's like I, I occasionally once in a while I see somebody and they cut dovetails. They got dovetails on this on the long grain side of the board. Well, you could snap them off with your fingers. So I figured that the major the uh, from a strength perspective, because of the slope, it was your, your best bet was going to be to have the tails on that board and the pins along the top. And if I'm wrong, we'll find out, but uh, Angie will let us Ray's know. Ray's on too. Who is? Ray. Cool Ray from Louisiana. That Ray? Yeah. Howdy, Ray. Um, we were just talking about Ray the other day. Pete was saying, uh, Pete served in Viet per Pete served in both Vietnam and the first Iraq War, and he was it was saying how tough Vietnam was, and he said, you know, I thought I had it really bad, and he said, then I got talking to uh, Ray, and Ray spent his entire year in the jungle. I don't think he ever got out, and uh, you know, Ray, uh, Pete just we made the comment, you don't have to look very far to find somebody that has worse off than you. So what I'm looking for right now is a little scrap of wood to uh, protect to protect my pine. And when you're doing this, don't make a little scrap. You've got to have a fairly long piece or else even the scrap of wood is going to leave a dent. Jake so is on. Jake is? Mm -hmm. Hey, brother. Jake Tirola was, uh, what, what class was Jake in? Where do you keep disappearing to? Back here. Mm -hmm. 
That reminds me. I could have pulled. I could have. You should explain to them how much sap has to be taken from a tree. Forty to one ratio. And in Canada, you can buy just bottled sap. You can. Yeah. Where? Superstore. So sap is uh, water, essentially. Why is that not uh, staying up, Jake? Sugar water. The, the maple tree, the... Why isn't it staying up? Oh, you know what? Pull that dog out. I'll bet you the, uh, the thing's all... It's jammed up. Yeah, I, I don't know why. It did that before, and then a couple days later it wasn't. Yeah, it's going to have to be fixed. Um, so anyway, the water that the tree gets from the ground that nourishes the rest of the tree has a hint of sugar in it. Sugar. And uh, when you make maple syrup, it takes 40 parts of sap to produce one part of syrup. So when you're boiling it, that's how you get rid of the uh, excess moisture. When you're boiling it, it boils like water. And then the, the second that it reaches the consistency of sap, the temperature spikes, just goes choom. So you got to be real careful or else you burn your syrup. And the last time I did it, after spending 40 or $50 in propane, I thought I had plenty of time to go get some more propane. And in the meantime, while I was gone, it got to that point and I ruined all my syrup. So now I buy it from other people. I'm just looking to see if I need to take some more off of this. Did you want to smell that? Mm -hmm. Is there any difference between... That smell like Dave's armpit? Uh, is, there any, <coughs> is there any difference <laughs> between... Where did the question go? Uh, between a square and Robertson screw? That's yes, the same. there is. The Robertson is a Canadian invention, and the square is a cheap imitation. They actually perform differently. One, I, I, I don't know this. Do you remember, Jake? Well, who's tapered? Robertson is supposed to be tapered. So one has a bit of a taper. If, really, if you look, if you Google it, there's an interesting story about Henry Ford wanting to buy the pat the rights to it and uh, Robertson not willing to sell it and Ford telling him, you'll never sell these in the United States. And uh, I tell the story of going to BYU in 1983. I'm just moving this over so it's in the same spot. In 1983, and uh, my first shop class... Taught by Dale Nish, I, I needed some screws. I said, where do you keep the screws? He says, over in the cabinet. So I went over, and all I could find was a bunch of slotted screws and Phillips. I came back to him. I said, where are the Robertsons? He goes, there's no Robertsons down here. He said, you're in the United States. And, and I was floored. I said, what? No Robertsons. So I got my money back on my tuition, and I came home. Well, almost. That was in 1983, and I couldn't find Robertson's anywhere down there until they just started to show up in the hardware stores in 1989, and still they're, uh, they're scarce. But I may as well promote them. So we now carry a full line of Robertson screws, number sixes and number, where's my... Where's my other thing? Number sixes and number eights from half inch up to three inch. So what's nice about them is, is well, that was a good commercial. When you put them on there and you have to reach way in to put a mount a box on a wall, uh, if, you're, you know, if you're an electrician, imagine trying to do that with a Phillips. So they really hold. In fact, sometimes they hold so well, they won't come off. I wonder if I can do this. You, know, you can't do that with a, uh, anything else. 
Occasionally, you see something built in Canada, and it'll be a screwdriver will be sticking out of the wall like that because it's so hard you can't get it off. Sort of. All right, did I get that down to length? No. Hey, Frick. Yes. When are we bringing Paul on? Uh, about 15 minutes. What are our numbers? We're at 479 right now. Is he not ready? He's ready whenever. Well, then why don't we bring him? Mm -mm -mm. No. Nope. What? Your counter's on to first. That's why the... Uh, yeah. I want to tell you something else neat about Verwood. If I went over to the bandsaw and cut some, I'd have a little pile of yellow dust. And a half, well, maybe a couple hours later, I'd come back, and that little pile of yellow dust would now be green dust. That's how fast it oxidizes. And when it oxidizes, it looks brown now. When it oxidizes, do I have a piece here that's... Well, this is oxidizing. It, it gets this uh, most incredible emerald green. Some of the, we've got a couple pieces that we've been making saw handles out of. It's just <coughs> Charlie's on. Gordon, Charlie Ray. So is Josh Brian. Hey, Josh. I just talked to Josh this week. We so hooked Josh up with a bench coming up from Seattle. Charlie, you got Derek there? Charlie? He'll let us know. What? He'll let us know. There's a delay, remember. Well, I was looking for my screw. Uh, now, here's the way, to, so you know how far you need to countersink. Just take your screw upside down, and as long as you can put the widest part, and it'll sit down below the surface, then your countersink is deep enough. So you say we're going to have the screwdrivers on Wednesday? Yeah, the reds. I think we should be carrying all of them. So, Super Dave said that Paul is probably still asleep. You know those Canadian Navy guys. Asleep at the wheel? Now, you know what? That's still sticking up. I can't have that. Uh, I could go in and file it, or I could go in and cut the chamfer. It's funny because there must be more of a... You know, we, um, we were going to do a video on... On the difference between a Robertson drive, square drive, Torx drive, <laughs> and Phillips, if it's even necessary. No. Is this Luther's idea? Yes. Of course. Josh says, uh, thanks so much for that, Rob. I'm really looking forward to getting the bench. Uh, Josh, brother, you are so welcome. He doesn't know when I'm zoomed in or not. Hi. Was a little close, was it? Yeah, because he was already zoomed in. Well, that's all right. As long as he knows what I said. I talked to him the other day. He just got a. He he's got a dog that. Uh, they were trying to train as a service dog, but. He was too much of a people dog. Is Kevin on? Kevin Burris. Uh, I haven't seen Kevin yet. Luther's not here either. Luther isn't. No. <laughs> we can talk about him. Okay, Dave, go first. <laughs> Ow. What is that hand drill actually called? Not a... The countersink? Oh, the hand, it's the Yankee the, drill. Is that what it's actually yeah. called? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what's next? Is that, is that the politically correct term? <laughs> well, if Luther was here, I'd get, to tell him, I'd get him to tell you the difference between a Yankee and a damn Yankee. But since he's not, they're never going to find out. <laughs> well, according to Luther, who's from Southern Carolina, South Carolina, a Yankee is someone that comes and visits from the north. And a damn Yankee is someone that comes and visits from the north and stays. Now, if that opens up a can of worms, blame Luther. He also eats grits and boiled peanuts. 
which in my opinion, there's never been anything more disgusting. I love boiled peanuts. Of course you do, Frick. <laughs> because you're a damn Yankee. Only for two years. Sorry for taking the time to do this, but if I don't, I'll end up forgetting and it'll all end up in the tool tray, other words known as the abyss. And it could be six months to a year before I find them. <coughs> Should take you through a, a little walk through the shop too to show you what we've done. Lots of improvements, but I think we already did that, did yeah, we not? We did. Well, we got rid of some more machinery. We did. We moved it out. Actually, we did that. We did that last oh. Saturday. Is the stuff all sold? What What do we still have? I think there's several people. I'm waiting to hear back from people. But if you're interested, we've got that eight inch, that eight inch delta jointer, we and still that have a few people to contact about that twenty inch delta uh, bandsaw that Jake was looking at the other day. And when you look at the adjustments for the guides underneath, it is a really impressive machine. It's. Uh, I mean, everything is... Honestly, the only downside to it is that it's not green. Yeah, that's why we're selling it. It's not green. But it is. It's a better machine. I hate to say it. It's a better machine than the general we're keeping. But, like we said, it's, it's not, not green. green. Okay. Time to put it together. Please. The outside will be done after. And, it, as it turns out, we have a great condition, 14-inch thickness planer, a general thickness planer that no longer needs to be sent to New York. <laughs> yeah, see if Dave speaks up on that. Okay, if I put this together right now, I'll then be able to put that in place because I want to I be able to put that in place and determine how much of a groove I'm going to cut on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this. Now, before I do... I've got to go in and check these. I don't remember if we did this or not. And if you don't have one of these, have we got any left? Mm -hmm. PEC, by the way, is currently shut down because of the coronavirus, so our inventory is running low. But it was Jake's idea to, to stock these, and the reason is it's so handy to come in and check your sidewalls. Of your first thing you want to check when you cut dovetails is you want to make sure that the sockets are flat. So you should be able to take something like this, solid square, and move it side to side. Hey, is Jim O'Shaughnessy on? Uh, O'Shaughnessy? O O'Shaughnessy? O'Shag Hennessy. O'Shag Hennessy. Is he on? Uh, I haven't seen him, no. Jim's uh, been going through some treatments, so I wanted to shout out to him if he comes on. So you run it side to side to make sure there's no bumps. If you find a bump, and if this rocks like that, that means you've got a high spot in the middle. And that means that when you go to assemble, that before these joints close, uh, the joints are not going to close because it's been hung up on this high spot. So I don't know if they're there or not. I'm just not liking the look of it. So I'm going to go in with my 17 degree, we're full of commercials tonight. My Jake Cosman 17 degree chisel. Does Super Dave have any of these? Yeah, unfortunately. He guilted me, told but did me. did you make his 18? Actually, I just made them 24 and told them that it was actually 17. <laughs> Pretty you shouldn't be messing with his TBI. It's not fair. Is Artis on tonight? He said he was roofing today. And it started with a case of beer being moved up to the roof. And the last thing that happened was someone fell through the skylight. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> why, that, can I, why can I not see Super Dave roofing? Why can I see him being the one inside with a broken skylight? Every picture I see, he's sitting on a couch fighting with that big dog for a spot. It's all right. Dave works when he's here. 
All right, so here we do. We're checking these to make sure that we can, while keeping it tight to the bottom, we can come up and there's no gap. And you see there's a bit of a gap there. So that means we've got either some debris down in here or we've got a slope on the pin. Either way, I want the gap to, I, want the, I don't want to have a gap in the joint, so I'm suspecting that we've got a little bit of a slope. We could check it by putting our, screw, our screwdriver, <laughs> our chisel. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my chisel on the side, and then I'm going to take my square. And I have to put it this way referencing it on the top and move it over like that and as you see you want to come over and see so can you see that mm -hmm. we've obviously got a bit of a slope that means when you put the joint together the space up here is wider than the space down here so you're going to force you're going to try to force a tail that's that wide down into a narrower space something has to give now on pine you can get away with it a little bit because it will compress a certain amount and uh, and it won't be an issue. Hardwoods, not likely. Okay, we're up tight. Now you say, oh my goodness, this takes so long. Well, it takes less time than having to fix it after the fact. Now this one, this one is bad. So I'm going to come up in here, just down inside the joint. I didn't used to have to do this. This is, this is age related. Set that on there. And, uh, and don't lean it over like that. Keep it down flat, move it over. If there's a gap, go in and fix it. That was way more than needed. Good thing it's on the inside. Okay, now we'll check these. You wanna be really careful with these. That little piece out there, if that sloped in at all, that's bound to split when you put the joint together. Good. Okay. Let's uh, put that together. We've got everything chamfered. Now that's a lot. That's a lot of glue surface. As soon as you start to put the glue on, that is going to start to swell. So you can't be slow about this. Got to have everything ready. Johnny on the spot. Where's my little glue bottle, Jake? <coughs> we were using it half an hour ago. It's over there. Where? On that bench. Over there on what bench? I got to get Ken his own. Put that on the list. This, by the way, is my favorite glue, Type Bond 3. They talk about it having a little more open time. I don't know how true that is. But the reason why I like it is waterproof. Not designed for below the water line, but it will survive outdoor application. So if it's as good as a regular white or yellow glue, but it has waterproof added to it, why not? Gary Burnett's on. Hey, Gary. Gary's always with us. How are our donations coming, Frick? I don't watch that, remember? Oh, you don't? Megan does. Could you ask her? Megan, tell us what the donations are. Actually, last week it was Gina. She texted me. Oh, Gina did? I don't know if she's on tonight, but. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to think of what we need to do here. We, we, I, don't, I don't want to. 
when you're dealing with a big, wide piece like that, it's, especially if it's short like that and you start tapping, if one goes while the others are still sticking, it's really easy to split it. So, and it is pine, so it doesn't stand up to any abuse whatsoever. So, ideally, I want to have a block of wood that will cover the whole thing, not at, but I need a block of wood that's wide in its, uh, in its width, not in its length. And I'll, I'll explain that in a moment. But uh, people commonly make this mistake when they're pounding a board together. They uh, pound it together, and they, use, they have the board oriented in the wrong way. Shoot. What am I going to use? I can cut a piece of this off. Wait, what about that piece right there? What? That piece of pine? What if this? You cut, no. No, what if you cut the top of that off? Because it has the knot on it anyway. Just at two inches, three inches. Now, that pine is so susceptible uh, or susceptible? Not susceptible. It's got a chunk on the bottom. What's the uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, it's so easily damaged. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is come in yeah. here, and you you want to have the part of the board that's going to be making contact with the piece you're putting together to be nice and smooth or any marks in the board are going to get transferred in the mean in the turn in the sense of a dent into the other piece now just in case i need it i'm going to have a heavier hammer on standby mallet okay make sure that is locked in place Make sure we're doing the right, the correct side. Okay, I got to put, I got to get a lot of glue in a very little time. So, anybody I need to say hello to before I start? Why do we have this here? I keep thinking there's something we're supposed to be telling them, and I'm not. Got to uh, clean that up. They're asking about the new T-shirts. Here. Oh, they're gonna be so. Have we told them? Are we going to tell them? That they've been ordered? No, what they are? No, I think you should wait. Okay, Surprise. it's going to be cool. You're going to like it. It fits <laughs> us. Uh, Jake, where's the big... You just used it. I know. I used my, uh, my big wood river chisel. Here it is over here. For scraping glue off my glue and knife. How's that? People gasp when they see this. Takes me 30 seconds to fix it. Did we ever find Luther? No. He's probably out picking up his wife's latest Craigslist purchase. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Oh, come on. Screws. You're seeing it as it would happen. I should say as it happens. Holes plugged. So uh, I didn't hear Ray. I know Ray's on there. Ray. I need you to tell me if you would like a bench. These are uh, civilian volunteers who are wanting to do this. So if you need a bench, I need to hear from you so I can get you set up. And anybody else that we... Jake Tirola has already built his. Really worried about this, uh, that little skinny pin. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? 
Huh? I can't guess. You need to put a clamp along the bottom. Can you... A ma- clamp along... You mean... Right below the pin. Okay. Uh, how are you going to clamp that, though? It's angled. Oh, never mind. Shoot. Well, you can... I no, mean, I can't. No, I can't. Moves. No, I can't. And it's... It will... Uh, Slide off? No, it'll wreck the point. Silence is golden. Now I'm putting some glue on that big. Why Why a metal applicator instead of a brush? Oh my goodness, a brush. Brush gets glue everywhere. The uh, spatula, also known, uh, known as a uh, an artist palette, allows you to place the glue. So you pound down through the end grain, and then you get efficient transmission of power. If you're putting a piece of wood on like this and pounding down through, the, a lot of your effort is being absorbed by the wood. When you pound down through the end grain, it all goes where you want it. Okay, make sure those are seated. They turned out very nice. Angie, you're going to be happy with this. Now, I got a little bit pulled up right there, and and as this, okay, come in, zoom in close, Jake. So this is a problem. Um, there's no pressure. Yeah, there's there. just yeah. So what I need to do, I need to figure out a way really quick how I can hold that and clamp and clamp across there. How am I going to do that? I've got I've got the material here. I should have thought of this. First of all, let's check and make sure that this is square. Ray would like a bench. At a boy, Ray. Uh, that's good. That's got a ways to go. Yeah, I know. I got to get this. I got to get this squared up. Ray, I need you to. Uh, I need you to send me your contact information, address, phone number. All of that stuff, and I will have uh, Jack. You'll hear from Jack before the night's over. Now, I got to change gears here. We need, oh, come on. We need a couple of clamps. You know what? I, I got to clean this place up because I cannot move the way I need to. Now, if you have to clamp this, when you, when you, when I'm doing this, you got to hold it for a second and allow that glue to move out of the way and let the pieces reposition. And if you need a ton of clamping pressure, then there's something in the way, and you're probably not going to be able to hold your gains. You may be able to get it to close with the clamp, but it's not going to stay there. That's actually looking pretty good, so I don't even know if I need to be doing this. I'm being careful not to. Don't wreck that sharp corner. All right, I got. I got to. I, I just have to address this corner. That's still square. So now, how are we going to do this? Um, first thing I'm going to do is pull it tight this way. Now, i got to figure out a way to put clamping pressure that way. And I can think of some ways I could do it if I had, if I had time, but I don't because that's drying. So what I'm going to try, Wait. what? It's two flat surfaces. <laughs> I'm going to try. I can, pull, I can pull right here on that. That's not going to be an issue. It's trying to get something to hold down here that's the problem. So these these quick grip clamps might just do it. No, try that again. I'd like to put pressure right. Ah, it's not quite.
by doing it. So what I was thinking was if you put if, if I you had put a call a if you put a call along here and along here, right? And then you clamped right across here, but you put if you put something there. Right, but I, I got glue drying. That's the problem. I know. This has got to happen right now. And I, I don't have time to there's all kinds of things. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go right down there. That that might do it. So what I'm doing is I'm hooking, I'm, I'm ignore, I'm get, I'm just offsetting it. Come on. I'm grabbing hold of this sharp corner down here instead of trying to catch on there. What I want to do is I want to put some pressure. Ah. All right, let's try this again. Put it direct. See, I can get a little bit of squeeze out there. Um, if I put something right here, like that, and clamp that, running out of time. Uh, shoot. All to pull that little tidbit into place. That's not long enough. Um, I was thinking of coming across there. How can I hold that? If I could, if I could hold that in position so that it won't allow the clamp to slide and I can put some pressure right there. But I really need to put it, I need to actually squeeze in this way. Here, 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 here. I need to be going corner to corner. Need some dramatic music here, I think. Huh? Need some dramatic so they music. They get on it, Frank. <laughs> DJ. You might put that, a that may have done thing. it. That did it. Good. I pulled it in. It slid it down and pulled it in. Now let's see if we kept it square. Yeah, that's pretty close. We'll make. We'll have to make the drawer fit the opening. I'd like to have that pulled. Okay. Why don't we get Paul on? Yeah, let's let's get Paul on. Give me, give this time a chance. Uh, yeah, give that time to set, so then we can then work on that back piece. Okay. So, um, who spots? You get to eat, we work. This would have been uh, two years ago? How long ago, Jake? Hmm? When did May. Paul first contact May. us? A year ago? Yeah. He came to the first call. So about a year ago, right now, I got a phone call one day from this guy. He introduced himself as uh, Paul Morrison, and he said, uh, Rob, I really like what you're doing. Uh, I'm, I'm in the Canadian Navy, and I'd like to volunteer to help if there's anything you can, if anything I could do to help. And I remember thinking, <laughs> absolutely. So Paul came down, and Paul was uh, Paul was awesome. Just just a great help. So much so that uh, the next time I said, Paul, if you can come back, we just would love to have you. So Paul came back. Paul is a lieutenant commander in the Canadian Navy. Um, that's a bigger than a canoe. I know we we have more big ships. <laughs> we have canoes and kayaks. Canoes and kayaks. That's right because we have to go in the north. Paul is currently serving in Australia, and uh, he's there for a year. So he's on all the time. He's a huge supporter of uh, the Purple Heart Project because he knows firsthand. So I'm going to let Paul tell you from his perspective what it's been like for him to be around this whole program. And Paul, how are you? I'm good. Can you guys hear me okay? Uh, yeah. If you want to wait for the chat, that's by me. Yeah. It's good. Take it away. Sweet. Perfect. Uh, so I'm I'm Paul. Um, I've I've done about 20 years in the Navy now. I'm a Naval Warfare Officer. So I, I started on the bridge and then worked my way down to uh, the Ops Room where all the 
all the weapons and sensors are, and I'm kind of on the path to hopefully eventually commanding one of my own warships uh, in the future. And we do have some fun ones, uh, some big ones that, that operate uh, a lot of times with the, the U.S. Navy. We have worked a lot with the U.S. Navy uh, and the various navies in Europe uh, and, and elsewhere in the world uh, over the years. I've uh, been pretty fortunate. I've got to deploy a number of times uh, doing anti-drug stuff uh, in the in the Caribbean with the U.S. and the Colombians, anti-piracy in, uh, in Nigeria and Somalia, I've done anti-terrorism in the Eastern Med. Uh, we've, we've sailed around uh, reassuring Europe that, that Russia is not coming over the border, and if they do, we'll be there to help them. Uh, I've been in combat in Libya, and I've also been a peacekeeper uh, on the ground in, in the Sudan uh, doing doing all the land patrols and, and helping uh, in the middle of the fighting that was happening there a bunch of years ago. Uh, so I've had a, a series of significant personal experiences in my, in my life uh, through all these operations. And, and as, as you go through, uh, I think Tom Fulgate uh, captured it well. It's, it's kind of a slow burn uh, for, for guys like me where I don't have that traumatic uh, experience. I'm not a, I don't have uh, any combat wounds mentally or physically uh, as such, but you, you kind of experience that slow burn of, of increasing responsibility, stress, and baggage that that comes with a lot of these roles and positions as you as you advance in your career. And uh, one day, a few years ago, uh, my wife told me that she'd made a, an appointment for a mental health uh, appointment for me to go to, and it was, <laughs> it was a bit of a wake up call for me because I didn't perceive that anything was wrong. Um, so anyway, I've gone down gone down that path and, and through through that uh, process I've uh, I've identified woodworking as, as one of those things that really helped me process uh, what was going on and uh, getting my grandfather's old hand planes and restoring those looking at Rob's videos of how to do that um, was was something that kind of identified his channel to me and I, I follow YouTube probably as much as anybody else does I think I've reached the bottom as part of this quarantine now um, but uh, learning about the Purple Heart Project uh, was was an eye-opener for me. I didn't know it existed, and uh, I just the, the stuff he was doing with the veterans really spoke to me as, as I'd followed my own path and identified a lot of the same therapy as it were uh, as, a, as a path to, to getting better and staying better. Uh, and I know my, my wife thinks it's working, which is good. Um, so Purple Heart Project, so I've been there for three of the classes now, uh, thanks to Rob for for allowing me into that world and, and to participate and experience it. Um, I thought I'd capture some of the impact that I've seen. Uh, so I'm, I'm not a scholarship uh, recipient. I just, I'm there sweeping the floors and, and making sure that uh, the breakfast orders are in the next morning primarily. <laughs> um, but uh, so the impact on the soldiers, the, the way, the way I summarize it is that uh, the common theme I saw with, with people going through the, the scholarship recipients, the veterans coming through, is that most of these guys are coming home from from overseas in, in war zones and combat, and uh, and they're either through the nature of their injury or or the, the subsequent uh, path that they go down uh, in in the downward spiral associated with a lot of these uh, mental in injuries specifically is they, they lose that support mechanism and and in the military the the the, the bond between uh, between warriors particularly guys who've been in combat that's a very intense uh, thing. And the relationships and the connections you build are very strong. And, and unfortunately, the nature of, of coming home and being injured is you lose a lot of that support mechanism and the chains of command uh, and, and the, the brotherhood that a lot of these guys uh, experience these things with is gone. And this, this program brings a lot of that brotherhood back to these guys. Uh, it's guys and girls. Um, you can you can sense it probably on day two as they come in. Everybody is standoffish to a degree on the first day, uh, with some exceptions. But uh, as the course goes on, you you see those connections rebuilding and uh, and people coming out of their shell and sharing, and and that's for military and civilian alike. It's uh, it's a really powerful thing to get to watch uh, as people process through and, and realize that they're in a safe place and that they they're free to share and and learn to make mistakes. You can see guys continually uh, striving and, and getting better at the work. You know, Abby uh, on, the, on the live stream is doing amazing things with dovetails that we saw a couple weeks ago. And seeing Pete Ambrose building a bench, like that, that stuff is super motivating for me, and I'm sure it is for, for Rob and everybody else who sees it. And I hope the donors are taking the, the same motivation from it. Incredible. And uh, one of the things for the vet specifically is that there's a – there's a real wholesome, meaningful uh, gratitude 
and it's, it's a weird feeling, I think, for vets because I think a lot of people, you know, thank you for your service is, is a platitude often. And this this program is, is one of those things. It's thank you for your service and, and here's an action. And uh, for military people, actions are, are really important. And I think uh, what Rob's doing is an action and it's, it's, it's incredible. And I, I remember Pete Ambrose, uh, again, uh, he was astonished that strangers, uh, particularly from another country, like would uh, would be willing to help him and and other vets just because they're vets. And, uh, and he was adamant that that was that was crazy. He couldn't believe that was a thing. And I think most vets probably think that to a degree. Um, it's it's a strange thing to have people coming out and and actively supporting and providing. And it it means much more, I think, than than most people will ever say. It's uh, incredible. Um, and moving to the civilians, <clears throat> I think with some exceptions, most civilians that uh, that attend don't really have much exposure to, to vets, um, particularly not in the format where the vets are, are opening and sharing and connecting. Uh, it's, it's really quite a privilege to get to, to see that stuff with, with people who've, who've done some pretty incredible things and sacrificed uh, some massive things. Uh, the environment that Rob has made is is in my experience, completely unique. And it's a very powerful one where the, that sense where you you want to share and you want to be able to help each other and stuff. It's, it's just awesome. And some of the most powerful stories I've ever heard, uh, I've heard in that workshop and I've, I've cried harder than I think I've cried anywhere else. And, uh, and I've laughed so hard that my ribs hurt seconds later, uh, in, in these, uh, in this workshop. Incredible. You referring to and, Dave's uh, dovetails? <laughs> Those, Though that that's as inspired as I've ever been in my life. Oh. Yeah, those, those are those are quite a thing. Those blind those blind double blind blo- dovetails are incredible. And uh, so anyway, this this changed the way I approach my entire life. It, it really has. Uh, just the, where I choose to place the value and and my decisions in life. And I think it's been the same for for many of the people. You know, you mentioned Jim O'Shaughnessy. Uh, I've stayed in contact with Jim. He lives five hours from me in Ottawa. And you know the. There's, there's inspirational stories wherever you choose to look for them. And and for me, uh, the impact to me, the exposure to these warriors is a, is a privilege to me. Um, as, a, as a leader in our organization, um, I think it's an obligation of mine to, to know and understand mental health and, and how that can affect the people that, that'll work for me. And this, this path and this community has been uh, vital for me developing as a, as a leader. And uh, it's, it's great. And finally, it's, it's cost me a lot of money. Um, <laughs> once once you see these sharpening tools and saws and everything that Rob has and does in person, you have to go buy them. It's it's not a <laughs> it's not a choice. Everything else just doesn't work, uh, and and they're worth every every penny. And uh, so I'd I'd like to to bring this to a close, I guess, with providing some some outward gratitude. Uh, so so Rob, his family, and his team. Uh, like I said, they're they're people of action, and they're the purest people that you'll ever meet. Uh, it's it's incredible how much they actually care, and you know it's it's just it's beyond understanding. It's you have to see it to believe it. I think, and and I get the sense through this YouTube community that that people get that sense, um, the passion that that Rob brings uh, both to woodworking and to vets awareness is is inspiring. It, it really is. It makes me proud to be Canadian. Uh, just knowing that Rob's a Canadian and a proud one at that uh, makes me proud to wear the uniform of that country. It, it really does. And I'm sure many others are the same. Just, just knowing that there are people from your country that, that have this reputation and, and do this work and efficacy. It's, it's incredible. Um, and I'm grateful to the vets, uh, allowing people into your world and your past is, is a very special thing. And, uh, I think that's well understood in this workshop. There's, there's no pressure. Uh, to do anything uh, as the three courses I went through, there was a number of guys that, that weren't at the position uh, to feel comfortable sharing and, and they didn't. And uh, that's, that's all good. I mean, you, you still get the benefits. Uh, don't, don't feel impeded if you're not willing to share. Um, it helps both you and the people listening. I think uh, everyone who gets to know you as, and your story and, and how you've uh, processed will take inspiration for life from you. It's, uh, it's incredible. And, and, like I say I love seeing the the progress continually by the by the guys who've attended online. It's it's a great thing, and uh, gratitude to the the donors and the people who donate and and provide and enable this program to exist. I'm I'm continually astonished that 
that this is a thing every week you guys turn out and, and put forth the donations and and know that like, it really has an effect on on real humans who have done real sacrifice and and uh it's it's incredible and <clears throat> i don't think there's a vet in the world that expects this gratitude to be shown uh, but it's it means the world uh there's a there's a sense of community amongst woodworkers and and you can see it here i mean uh, i don't know what percentage of of your audience is is woodworkers not veterans but it's probably the significant amount and there seems to be a a brotherhood sistership of of craft that that is following you rob and it's it's incredible to watch and you know devoted to to perfection and, and making that drawer fit even though i know it's frustrating for you that your drawer fitting expedition is is my every experience in woodworking nothing ever fits so <laughs> <laughs> i uh, I, I think it's great, and uh, I think that that brotherhood sistership uh, translates to veterans because of that that same bond that they have. So this, this pursuit of craft, pursuit of uh, of something that you can hold in your hands and and enjoy the rest of your life, I think that's the core of why Purple Heart Project works so well. It uh, it it just it just clicks somehow. And, uh, I think I've I've spoken long enough. I just I, I wanted to finish with an acknowledgement. Uh, of the loss of six Canadian service members uh, this week. Uh, the helicopter from the ship HMCS Fredericton, uh, named after the city that's about an hour and change from Rob's workshop, uh, crashed in the Mediterranean Sea on operations uh, this week. And so as part of the, the crash, two naval officers, three Air Force officers, and one airman have, have perished. Uh, one found, five missing, presumed, uh, presumed dead uh, now in the it's a, it's a good reminder. So I was I was third in command of, of that ship, and I sailed with the two pilots previously in my career. So it's it's pretty close to home, uh, and it's a sad time uh, for that. And it's just a, a reminder that that servicemen and women, even even if you're not in a war zone, are, are subject to some pretty uh, pretty dangerous things. It's statistically safe and inherently dangerous. Everything that we do, and. Uh, just seeing the the public support that's coming out of out of that, uh, specifically with the deaths of the ship from the, the Fredericton, and and the Purple Heart uh, project, just I think it lights a fire in all of us who serve, and uh, you know, it really gives us that sense of a home team advantage, uh, and it, it's really important. And uh, yeah, so thanks for the opportunity to share. I, I love following and love interacting with everybody in the chat. It's it's great. Thank you, Paul, and thank you for uh, serving and continuing to serve. And thanks for that note about the uh, the losses we suffered this week. We will uh, we will keep that in our thoughts. But you know what's wrong with your woodworking is you're on the you're on the wrong side of the equator. Everything's backwards. <laughs> Come home. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> well, that was uh, that was awesome, Paul. A lot of the guys on there tonight know Paul. And you're right. <laughs> Sometimes his task seemed a little menial, but I tell you, everybody wanted their breakfast the way they ordered it. Which I should mention, it's called Island Girls, small restaurant, just not far from here. And they actually opened up early every day for us, so we could get in there at 7.30. And they also gave us uh, half off on the vet's meals, so they've been big supporters of it. And I want shout out to them. <coughs> And I I've actually, I need to find out what's been going on with them because this coronavirus, I'm sure their business has been shut down. I was thinking about it. And you know how Dave comes around a lot and we don't want him to? Paul's like the guy that we want to come around a lot, but he doesn't. If only we could switch them somehow. That's harsh. Yeah. <laughs> Jake's being particularly hard on Dave, but he misses the spooning that used to occur. <laughs> sure, he's seven withdrawal. Um Quick mention, next next uh, Saturday, I'm, I'm buying a little bit of time so we can get this to dry. Next Saturday, we are going to do another Q&A. Um, if you have some new, Frick, are we going to do that to let some new questions come in? Or I, just I, don't, I don't think that's a good idea yet. What do you mean? Well, we have six pages and you barely. Okay, we're going to go, okay. But you can still ask some live ones. Yep. Um, we're also going to do something a little bit different. So, Philip, in... Missouri, uh, no, Kansas. Independence. Independence, Kansas? <laughs> Missouri. Missouri? Wait. No, he's in Kansas. No, he's in Kansas. There oh, could yeah. be two independents. Oh. Philip is a Vietnam vet, and uh, he keeps buying tons of stuff from us, so we like him. <laughs> I got to get his saws made. Is he on? Is Philip on? 
I haven't seen him. Anyway, so f about a week ago, or a week and a half ago, Philip uh, said, Rob, I'd like to pay for a soldier. So he gave us $3,500 to cover a soldier in one of our upcoming workshops. And last Saturday, it wasn't very clear because our audio was bad. Something happened. And we Don't didn't get to us. hear Ash very well. But Ash uh, has been trying, before we brought him up, has been trying to do something with woodworking and fellow veterans. And he had a small shed that uh, he was doing his best in. And he lost that to the fire. And I had told him when he was here that if you want to do something at home, I will send you enough tools for, for the three of you. We already gave him his. Well, when I just found out when we were talking last Saturday that he'd lost his shed to the fire. And Philip called me this week and said, Rob, I yeah, I was really touched by that. He said, I want to uh, I want to donate $5,000 to help Ash get a shed, uh, a, a, a little small shop built up. So I thought, you know what, that's awesome. What we're going to do next Saturday is our donations are going to be put uh, to Ash to help him build his facility down under so he can take care of the diggers, which are the name of Australian soldiers. So he is gathering up a quote on materials this week, and we will have that ready so we'll know what our target is. And if you want to pitch in and help, by all means. I think it'll be absolutely fantastic. And a big tip of my hat to Philip for starting that off. Actually, so last week we had some more donations. Yeah, 300 so far. Uh, that's, so we're at 5,300. So Luther corrected me and said that it's Independence, Missouri. Then he corrected himself and said, no, it is Kansas. There's and one in both. Yes, and it's Independence, Kansas. So y what you're telling us is we Luther right was wrong? Time, and Luther was definitely wrong. This will go down in the history books. And I will make sure that we remember it. Actually, Luther and uh, so, uh, uh, you know what? Ask Luther if there's anything that he wants me to tell them that they should do to help us with our new promotion of our YouTube channel. So Luther's got this bull by the horns and he's uh, going crazy with it on how we can make our YouTube channel more, uh, more better. More Much better. More visible. More visible. Popular. Popular. So if he comes back and says something, tell me so I can shout it out. All right, I, uh, I need to get at this because I've got to be able to put that piece in place. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Ooh, gee. Scared me there for a minute. I looked. I saw a groove over here, no groove over there, and I thought, did I put this on backwards? So I think I can do this now. We want can that. Can just, just pull it up in the vise? Yeah, true. Oh. Did it not come up? Well, you got the clamp on the back side. So let's put that up in there. So how? What I want to do is, I want to try to mimic this groove. Now I'm. Expecting that that's not square, but we can pull it square. Oh my! That's way out. Well, actually, you know what, Jake? It really isn't. It's difficult to. Uh, that's not registering the way you think it is. It's not out bad at all when you put it in there like that. We can pull that in. So. Is it going to be enough to just cut a chamfer along there, or do we actually need to cut a little bit of a groove? And I think what we need to do is cut a little bit of a groove in order to get that all the way around. But what we want is what we're seeing right there. So how are we going to do it? We put that in. Are you not gluing the top? Yeah, I am going to glue the top, but I don't want it to look like that. I want to oh, have. Oh, I, I, I couldn't put that in place because of that. I, you know what? I can take this off. That's that's served its purpose. So this is going to go in, and we have a groove like that. So I, I need to have essentially that copied. So I'm thinking. 
we need to come in and we just need, we need to cut a little notch like that, knock that. But that's sensitive. It was what I was going to do. Well, let me just take a couple of passes on it and see if that's. Where's my block plane? Got to go this way. Now, we're doing this merely for aesthetics. Watch for Philip's name to pop up, Frick. Okay. What's Philip's last name? Boyd. Philip Boyd. Philip, if you're out there in, what do we call it, YouTube land, please speak up and let us know. Didn't sound good. How are our donations? Is anybody? Megan's tracking them now. So is Gina. She sent me. Where where are we? About twenty. We're at about twenty four hundred, and with or without the thousand. That's that with that's with Derek. With Derek's thousand. So that means we're at fourteen hundred. In addition to that. I said 2,400 total. Right. With so if you take off Derek's 1,000, oh, right. we're at 14. Yeah. Okay, a little more. So if we put it like that, that will that will get us the effect we want. See that? The funny thing is too, it's I I I need to bring it right down to where this tongue meets, and then it'll look exactly the same. Now I'm just gonna use this because it's got a little more it's a little sharper. And the throat is closed down, so it'll give me a little cleaner cut. Now the hard part is going to keep the glue off of that. Okay, so can you see that? Mm -hmm. Now, we've got to put this in place. How are we going to do this? We've got to put this in place first before we put this other piece on. This is going to be difficult. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit hesitant to working on this. How long has this been in the clamps? Any oh, idea? It's, it's at least been 20 minutes. Actually, it's been more than that because a half an hour ago we broke... For Paul. Okay. So now what we're going to do is go in here and clean this up. Now I'm going to have that so it's resting on that piece of Dave wood. I don't think we kept our little gain right there. No, we didn't. But we kept it, uh, maybe, no, maybe we did. So I'm going to go in here and just clean up the pins or flush them up. Now, take the five and a half and we'll plane that. Shoot, that's too much. Again, need some wax. Wow, look what I happen to have in my pocket. Another 
pass. A little bit of a stutter right there. Paul, that was great, by the way. Thank you for doing that. Now, I've got a bit of a plane track, so I'm high one side. I've got it on my left. No. A little more. I'm pushing this. I'm rearranging the blade each time to try to get it so that my cut is, uh, or my blade is parallel to the sole so I don't have any of these plane tracks. That feels pretty good. Okay, take Phillip, that out. Philip Boyd is here. Philip, did he hear my uh, introduction of him? He did. Good. And you want to say thank you to all the folks that make the world safe. Thank you, Philip. You were a big part of that yourself. Okay, so this is ready to go in. Now, how are we going to do this? And the reason why I'm, I'm uh, trying to figure out how we're going to do this is this has to be put in place. And it's got to be, it's got to line up. Shoot, shoot, shoot. I think. You know what we might have to do? We might have to dry fit it. And that's a crime. Because if we don't, if we don't dry fit it, we have no idea where this is this way when we put that in. Because this, the edge of this has to be glued to the underside of the top. So if we dry fit it just enough that we can, we, that lines that up, then that can go in. We can, we've got to clamp this way, but we can do that because this is going to be eased off anyway, so we can clamp right on that. Once that's done, once that's done, that gets it lined up here. Then we can go in and put this other end on. No, that's not true either. Shoot. I think we actually, I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to dry fit it. We're going to have to sit it tight. Okay, wait a minute. Do we need to dry fit it? Can we not, why can't we put this whole thing together at once? Can you think? If we put it all, if we put it all together at once, that means that we're that just means we have, we're clamping this as well as clamping that at the same time, and we're going to glue the first little part of this. The dry fit would just re, would take away having to do, having to worry about doing this while we're getting this in place. However, the dry fit is always going to be risky because what may happen is you bang it up when you're taking it apart. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to plan to put the whole thing together at once. So I got to take this out. Kevin Burris is on. Hey, Kev. Kevin is a uh, Kevin is an EOD retired. EOD are guys that defuse bad guy bombs at great peril to themselves. And Kevin had his fair share of explosions. Friend of Super Dave's. Works with us whenever we do uh, wood shows in, in the Toronto area. Okay, I just want to make sure. <coughs> Excuse me, I was trying to turn my head away from the microphone. I turned my head into it. I don't know if you can see the way this 17 degree chisel is cutting, but it 
removes and has the ability to remove translucent shavings. Pretty cool. Now, uh, shoot. Let's see if we can find some good ones. Okay, that one is good. This one needs some work. Actually, it's just some damage right there, so that's our, that one's good. That one is good. That one is good. That one is good. Super Dave said, what? Dry fit? Oh, I remember my first dove, too. <laughs> oh, he's a funny guy. I was only saying that just to see if he was napping up on the roof again. That one is... If you Luther was late, but he was here. I, I thought he was already there. He was telling you. Mm -hmm. He's apologizing. He just recently joined us. No, can't can't. Uh, what's why can't we start our meetings on time? Now, I'm really fighting the grain on these. I don't know if you can tell, but the grain is very extreme in this direction, and I'm paring down against it. Yet with, these, with this chisel, I'm able to do that, and that's pretty remarkable considering. So if you're going to do... Any amount of work in pine, either make yourself one or get one from us. And it's the primary bevel is 17 degrees, so it's just a, such a low attack angle. It does wonders on this stuff. Now, what I'm having to fix is for some reason, it must have been when I was sawing, the grain at the top really took a beating. So the square is touching everywhere below that first sixteenth of an inch. Now, so this is the one that I was saying that these ones out here have to be done right, and that one's that one's out quite a bit. Can't have it. Oh. Well, there's an example of what happens if you pare down from the top. Fortunately, I did it on the inside, so it's a perfect example. I exp you experiment in here first. Don't come out here. If you come out here and it happens, you're going to see it on the front of your joint. So I kept my chisel back here, about the back two-thirds, and when I did that, the fibers undercut. That means I've got to, I've got to handle this bit differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to slice across the grain, which will control that somewhat prevent it from happening. Now, if I go in here, I still have a little bit, not bad. It's a good shot, Jake. Good shot. Is it? Where is he? Right in there. Nice and tight. Kudos to the cameraman. We've been hearing that all week. I'm going to watch the top side of my chisel. I don't want to be taking off any of that. Okay. That's good. All right. This is ready. Oh, I'm looking at the time. You know what? I'm not going to try to do this. If I try to do this, we're going to end up two and a half hours. Um, It'll take that long to glue it? You don't have well that I much open? I, I got to do both. I got to do both. But, but what I mean is you don't have that much open time. 
So we got to go in here. What I'll do, <coughs> maybe I, maybe I'll do it. Just let me let me think. We'll get it started part way. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to hold just get it like that and I'll apply the glue right in there. And I'm just kind of thinking out loud and then I'm going to come in. Oh, I don't I can't do it. Can I Is there enough space? to put that down into position. Yeah, there is. So we put that down in, we glue that first little part up here, first couple of inches. We put that down in, we've got a glue up here. You wanna do it? Yeah. All right. <sighs> here goes nothing. Uh, I don't know how I'm gonna keep glue from being, getting on that. Okay. So, this is in this is in place, and, and uh, that just gives gives me a little bit of a head start. What's that noise? My phone dropping. Um, where's my spatula? Clean that up. Hey, uh, um, what have we forgot? Did everybody you know how to sign up for the draw? Yeah, I just posted it. And you know how to make a donation. That was a that was a great description of what happens here. And I, I'm the first one to tell people I have no I have no idea what we're doing. We know wood. That's what we do. The rest of it just kind of happens. Okay. Um, I can put this in right now. I'm going to glue right along here. I'm going to glue along this inside edge. I'll put that in place. We'll come up here. We'll glue all of that. Bring all of that down, and everything should work out just dandy. I'm going to come in here and cut a little chamfer on this ledge. Yeah, on this ledge, just to help ease that together. It won't be seen. Doesn't matter that there's some marks on the inside. That's on the inside. Actually, no, that won't be. But I, I'm going to take one pass. I'm going to take one pass on the inside bottom just because this might be seen. And we wouldn't want to have saw marks. Doesn't doesn't affect anything in terms of fit because we've got that... Uh, We've got that ledge. May as well do the whole thing. We've had a suggestion. How are our numbers, Rick? We're at uh, 781 right now. How much? 781. We had a suggestion, I won't say who from, that uh, when Super Dave's here, Jake and Super Dave should do a live episode uh, doing a dovetail. It would be the third installment of Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> I thought we'd have Super Dave and Jake here at Christmas time, and we'd have Festivus. We could get out the pole, and we could have Feats of Strength. Mm. Airing of Grievances. Airing please. of Grievances, that would take forever. <laughs> Luther would be here for that. Okay, got to cut a little chamfer on this one too because we got we want the glue to slide up. Rex could come home for that. Wouldn't want to miss it. That's a squirrel plane you're using, right? Squirrel tail. Squirrel tail, yeah. Not a squirrel's plane. Was that Dave asking? No, quite a few. Okay. That's Okay, am I am I ready to go? Yeah. No, I'm not. I need clamps in order to go from here to here. And I think I'll use those uh I think I'll use those uh quick clamps. The ones that I've got plastic tips on. Jake, where did those things come from? Those Bessies. Did Pete ever get did he mention? Not yet. Okay, we'll have to go like that. That'll catch on there. Okay, and if we need to, we can grab some over there. Okay, here we go. So we're going to come up about. Uh, we're going to come up about two inches. 
Oh, come on. Now don't slip. Okay. Now I better put, while I'm at it, I better put the same thing up here. going in there like this and I'm going to put a little bead right in here hopefully that will not interfere with or it won't end up coming out the top sure I don't get glue on the uh, wrong spot. Now, I actually got to get this together first. I got to get this together, pull that down, and I can pull that in tight. So now I got to go in and we got to do these. Any more vets, Frick? <coughs> Uh, yeah, it's a Who? lot further up in the chat, so I... Why didn't you tell me? Because you were in the middle of something. No, you don't. You, I said you, you can always interrupt me for that. Megan's, yeah. Megan's been telling me. Okay, who? I already told you that. Well, we got them all? All that I've been notified of. I think I'm going to do, uh, next week we'll do like a little Google form so that Vets can say that they're here, and then that way we have a list, a more proper list, so we can make sure we get all of them. All right. Do you ever use hide glue in any of your builds? No, I don't like it. And and I'm honest, I've never found a, a reason why it would be better than than what I'm using. I know somebody says you can take it apart. I don't really want to ever take this apart. My mallet, where's my white mallet? Okay, got to get this. Jake, I could almost use you. As an extra hand. Yeah, but never mind, you got the camera. We got Rexy here. <coughs> this is tight. Okay. Um, there, that's in. That's in. That's in. Yep, yep, okay. Big hammer, big hammer. Where is it? In the. Derek is on. Derek? Howdy, Derek. Use your rubber mallet. Derek is a. Oh, I better not say yet. Go over there. In case he doesn't know. Okay, so now. What? That one. I think that's one. the same thing. Ah. Split? Yes, split? I knew that was tight. Got a little split right there. It's all right. It's not bad. 
Um, nice thing about the white mallet, now white doesn't leave a mark, and it will, the heavy end grain, the hard end grain will go up into the mallet, and yet the rubber, the softer part will still come down here and apply pressure on the tail. Now we've got to come in here, and we've got to pull this up tight. Right? Shoot. What? Well, I really don't want to be... Uh, That's not a good clamp for that I don't want to be working on that. Yeah, it is. It's the only one for that job. But it moves, the, the pivot point moves too much. Son of a gun, I didn't get a, I didn't get a piece. Okay, I got to get this. This is. Uh, Don't mess this up. Eight hundred fifty-six people are watching. <laughs> Lovely. Um, I got to get, I got to get tight across here. And I got to pull that tight. So how am I going to do that? Where's my? Uh, of course, they're always too short. Where's the long one, Jake? This might do it. I got some more of these. Where are they? Where's the, uh, no, where, they're, where are they? No. Son of a gun, where are they? They're usually hanging right there. You know what I'm talking about, right? The short, shorter versions of those? Yeah. Crap. Well, it's all right, I can, I can do this. Hold that, please. Hold that right on there. No, nope. gotta get a little more out here. No, wait a minute. Whoa, no, hold on, that? hold on. What? What is that? Must be this. Yeah. You oh, that why right. did that break? No, no, I'm push I pushed that off. Why did that go? Too much pressure. Shoot. The dovetail too move? much pressure. No, that slid. Oh, is that is it splitting that half pin? That uh, that slid up. I can't. I can't do that. I can't apply pressure there. No, we can fix that. We can. That's pushed back in. All right. Now all, all I got to do is got to come across here. Oh, wait a minute now. What's going on here? That should be, well, we screwed up on that. Let's just start over. Yeah, we've done that enough. <laughs> what? We screwed up on that. What, what happened? Dog face puke. <laughs> Well, we didn't do the math right on that. See? Now, you know what? That doesn't have to bottom out. That doesn't have to, bo have to bottom out if I move that over. If I can move that over, I need, uh, I need a wide, I need a wide reference. Hold it right there. You're denting. Okay, reference that up there. A little bit of clamping pressure on here. You son of a gun. That top piece isn't down. The Friggin top math. portion isn't down. What? The top portion's not tight. This, this, this isn't down. Yeah. I swear, math is going to be the death of me. How that happened is beyond me. Do you understand? Do you understand what happened? No. Well, we bottomed. This had to bottom out in order for this gap to close. 
this had to bottom out. Well, look at our gap, see? And it didn't, which means this was too short. How we did that, I do not know. Let's see what we got for. We're 15 and, what is that? 15 and 15. Up here, we're just a little bit beyond 15 and 15. Not bad. Well, we got to go in and repair that. Next time. That won't be hard. We can we can re we can refix that. We're going to have a gap on there, which I don't like. We can still uh, we can make our drawer fit the opening, so that's not a big deal. Flush that up. How do these look? Oh, that's good. All right. You guys are getting to see all the mistakes. We'll see how well we do in hiding them. Now I do need to have I do need to have a little bit of pressure on here, just enough to keep that tight. Touching to the glues. And why that would slide out there like that is beyond me, meaning the pressure being applied here was enough to actually break that little lip off. And I wish I had another one of those clamps because I'd put the same thing up here. Can't do that. How is our time? We're at two hours now. Okay, you ready for your draw? Sure am. Okay. Good stress. Good stress. Let's come across here and just pull that in a little bit. What did we use last time, Jake? We, I just used it, didn't I? But I think that's all right. Okay. Whew. Show the prize one more time before we... So our prize, four prizes tonight. So the three of them are going to be uh, 500 mil of, the, of uh, pure, pure spirit of Canada. And our magic wax... Make that plane move as if your blade was super sharp. And then we have the grand prize, which is going to be a set of, of uh, premium. These are the best, I promise you, these are the best Brad Point bits you will ever use. They're made by fish, made in Australia, uh, Austria, sorry. And they, are, they will cut so clean. That was a demo line. Yeah, that was. Don't do that to clean it out because you'll slice your fingers. What are these a set? 120? $120. Fret saw with a dozen blades. Mallet that we turn right here. Another another emblem of Canada. We should actually set it like that. Tape all of your clamps and some wax. All right. Everyone had a chance to uh, contribute to the Purple Heart? Yep. We raised just under $3,000 according to Gina. You want in there, Jake? All right. Oh, what about t-shirts? Did we sell any t-shirts tonight? I wasn't keeping track of that. So. Uh, All right, you ready? Yeah. This out of the way. All right, first winner for maple syrup. And, is and magic wax. And magic wax. Is Russell Albritton from Texas? I know Russell. Congratulations, Russell. Winner number two is James Vanderveen from British Columbia. East Coast, East Coast, yeah, they don't make maple syrup up there. Soft maples just don't do it. It's on its way, James. All right, and finally, Thomas Barton from Pennsylvania. Thomas? PA. Well, they make maple syrup down there, but the farther north, the better it gets. You'll, you'll see what I mean. Oh, we have one more, right? Yeah, this is the grand prize. Here we go. John Faree from Florida. Hey, John. Congratulations. It'll be in the mail for you this week. You'll love it. 
Make sure you come back and tell us how good those bits are. We know what you're going to say about the syrup. All right, folks, it's been another great one. Next week, remember, question and answer. How, what was our final number tonight on participants? We had in the upper 800s, 880, so I think. That was the record? I think so. Yeah. 894. Eight, oh, really? 894. That wow. is the record for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Um, have a great week. See you next Saturday night, same time, 6 o'clock. Don't forget to register for the newsletter. Luther puts a ton of work into this. Go to any web pa any of our pages on uh, robcosman.com. Register for the newsletter. There's tons of information on there. And the newsletter that just went out, and it's on sharpening oddball sized oddball plane blades. Things like the uh, router plane, the scrub plane, shoulder plane. That may not sound odd, but it is. Our little 8-inch chisel, which will be released very soon. That's a tough chisel to sharpen. So that's our version of the IBC 8-inch. You'll be able to get it. What? Our, our, that's our... It's our, eight, our IBC 8-inch chisel. Did I say that wrong? Yeah. Okay. Have a good one. Thank you. Appreciate your support. And you vets, tip my hat. See you guys.